Join us to navigate your awakening as we share the ancient science of transformation. Practicing this ancient wisdom will help you tune into your power and unlock your greatest potential. If you are ready to embark on your awakening and discover your soul path, then please welcome your host and transformation expert, Trinace. Welcome to Navigating the Awakening. I am your host, Trinace. Thank you for joining me today. I greet you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. I would like to begin with the internal light meditation so that we can all align our energies with the cosmos, with the universal light of source. If you are driving or listening to this and not able to close your eyes, then please simply open your heart and allow the intention of healing to move through you. Allow each breath to relax you more and more as we go deeper. Let's begin. First breath in. Breathe out. Second breath in. Breathe out. Third breath in. Breathe out. Relax. Allow your breaths to find their natural rhythm. With each breath in, allow yourself to become centered and focused. And with each exhalation, release all tension and stress. Any mental distractions or images. And allow yourself to be in this moment in meditation. Focus your attention on the center of your chest. See your internal light as it illuminates your heart. As it fills your heart with brilliant healing white light. Continue to see this light as it removes all heavy, negative, or dark energies, allowing your heart to be filled with peace, love, joy, and forgiveness. Continue to see the light as it spreads in all directions throughout your chest, moving into your lungs, feeling your lungs with healing energies, removing any blockages and allowing each and every red blood cell that passes through the heart and the lungs to be filled with life-giving light and love energy. Allow this energy to flow to every extremity of your body. And now see the light as it moves up into your shoulders, down into your arms, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, moving into your palms and fingertips, allowing for healing energies to flow through your palms, radiating out into the world and all around you. Continue to see the light as it moves up through the neck, releasing tension and stress, moving into your cheeks, your ears, your nose, your eyes, your forehead, and moving up into your crown, activating the connection with your higher self, allowing for clear communication, clear downloads. And now see the light as it moves and down into the diaphragm and the stomach, bringing healing to these organs. And now moving into the small intestine and the large, activating the healing through the absorption of your nutrients and your light energies. Continue to see the light as it flows into the kidneys, the liver, the gallbladder, the spleen, the pancreas, and the bladder. All of your tissues, organs, and cells are now filled with healing light, bringing you into perfect balance, perfect health aligning you with all that is good, all that is desired. Continue to see the light as it moves into your colon, the uterus, the sex organs, bringing healing energies to these parts of your body, 
allowing for full alignment in these organs of regeneration and release, giving you the courage and the wisdom to know when to release all energies that no longer serve your highest good, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. And now see the light as it passes through your hips, moving through your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, and into the soles of your feet. You are now filled with healing light, bringing you into perfect balance, perfect health, allowing for the energies of the universe to flow through you, allowing your body to become a harmonic match to the universe as it is. The highest vibrations of source energy that can align with you. Allow that to be so and now. Continue to see the light as it moves through the soles of your feet, turning into silver cords that move deep into Mother Earth, grounding you and anchoring you to Mother Earth allowing for any excess energies to flow through these cords to be used by Mother Earth to be recycled to create something beautiful. Continue to see your light that shines brightly from within your body, now growing brighter and brighter with each and every breath. See the light as it passes through the pores in your body, until you are now surrounded in a beautiful bubble of healing white light. See all of the colors of the rainbow within this light, all of the spectrums, all of the frequencies, and allow any part of you that needs these colors, these frequencies to bring balance, to absorb them as needed. Continue to see this beautiful luminescent beautiful bright light spread throughout the room, the space in which you are in, allowing for this energy to be absorbed by all beings that come in contact with it, to be brought into balance and oneness, into harmony with the universe, as this is universal energy that is flowing through you. You are at one with the universe, the multiverse. Continue to see your light as it passes through the walls, the obstacles of the room, the space that you are in. And now continues to move in all directions. Moving through the ground into Mother Earth. To be used by Mother Earth to bring balance and healing back to the planet on which we live. See the light as it moves up through the ceiling and out into the atmosphere that we breathe. To be used by Mother Earth to cleanse the air, to restore us through our breaths, to realign us through our breathing. And continue to see the light as it fully encompasses the planet in healing love light energy that brings balance to each and every being that is open to receive it, that restores the love that awakens the heart and the spirit of oneness, that brings the family of humanity back together as one, removing any obstacles to our union and allowing for oneness through our hearts, through our light, through the universal force that connects us all. Continue to see as our light joins together throughout the planet, wherever we are, growing brighter and brighter as we are now connected in the family of light through our love. Allow this energy to now move out into outer space, surrounding the planet, and now moving throughout the Milky Way, encompassing all planets, beings, life forms of any kind, allowing for a connection of the heart, of oneness and spirit, 
of the increase of all beings in light and love and power and strength and the inner being and our true oneness. Continue to see this light as it moves out into the multiverse, uniting all life forms wherever we may be, any time, space, dimension, or multiverse, allowing for the union, the oneness, the remembrance that we are all one being, having a myriad of experiences, allowing for true forgiveness and continual evolution through love and light. And so it is. Thank you. (sighs) Thank you for sharing your light with me. I don't know about you guys, but every week it gets more and more powerful. It's harder for me to come back from it. (laughs) All right. We will now resume our discussion on the body universe. And I truly feel like I'm in the universe right now. So (laughs) this is appropriate. And after our break, we will move into Native Earth astrology to discuss the flicker people. And for those of you who are wondering what is a flicker, it is a bird. Okay, you don't have to wait. All right, our topic today is the body universe. This is a continuation of a very deep discussion we started several weeks ago. And Spirit wants us to continue this because There's just so much to talk about, and you will find that we'll go deeper and deeper into it in stages. But this is just setting a foundation for our discussion as we get into the deep, deep levels of sacred tarot, sacred astrology, the Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian tarot, which is very, very deep because that is where we're going We're going there because it is going to explain so much of what we desire to know in our lives today. The ancients truly had the answers for us. So this is why we must go back to our roots, go back to our bloodlines in order to find those answers. So why is it important for you to know about the body universe And what that truly means. Now, you may hear this term used on many occasions in different ways. But today, I want to speak to you about what that truly is, the body universe, according to the ancients. And they speak of it in a way as though there is no separation. So we look at ourselves as being an individual who has our own set of eyes, ears, nose, mouth, so on and so forth. We have our own separate body. And this is how we have been taught to interpret our reality. But to the ancients, there is no separation between your body and the universe because it is one. And as you continue to study and grow and learn, and many of you may be already aware of many of these things, and so... This is more confirmation for you. As we dive deeper into the body, we begin to see that the universe is within us. And simply by looking at a drop of blood under a dark field microscope, this is live blood analysis. And I'm sure there's some videos on YouTube or somewhere where you can see this for yourself you will literally believe that you are looking through a telescope into outer space. That's what your blood looks like under a dark field microscope. You will see stars, you will see comets, you will see planets, you will see all kinds of things in there. Hopefully not a whole bunch of parasites because those look really creepy. (laughs) It will freak you out. But The beautiful thing is when you see this, it's absolutely amazing because you think you're looking in outer space. And that is exactly what the ancients were talking about, that you and the universe are one. There is no separation. The separation is only an illusion. So once again, we'll hear this over and over and over again. And it has to be stressed because the Maya is real. The illusion is real. And we 
must awaken to that illusion. And the only way that we do that is through expanding our awareness, our consciousness, our knowledge. So everything that is outside of you is also inside of you. And these are principles that you hear all the time in metaphysical teachings. And of course, this all comes from ancient teachings, wisdom teachings. Yes, it is. Everything that is outside of you is inside of you because it is simply a mirror. It's a projection of energy. So when we go deeper into the self and we truly start to metabolize this information to where we don't have to keep reminding ourselves that we are the universe and the universe is us. When we stop having to remind ourselves of this, then we've made it to that point where now you become one. And each and every thought you have, you see it manifested all around you. You start noticing this. And this is what the natives teach us. The Native Americans teach us about the animal totems and many other cultures around the world. That when you see different animals, it, I don't care if it's just you driving down the street going to work every day. You see something. And what you see is a reflection of something inside of you. It is the energy that is within you. And I love the totems. I love the numbers. And we'll be going deeper into those things as time goes on as well. Because it is as if... The universe has taken a vibration of frequency that was within you and is now projecting it in front of you on a screen and it turns into this thing, whether it be numbers, people, animals, anything, anything that you can see. And so when we start going through our awakening process, then we learn about how to start looking these things up. And most of us just simply Google them or however you choose to search them out, get some books on totems, get books on numerology, and you start to break down the messages of the universe because that is exactly what it is. It's as if you have been knocked over the head, and we talked about this, I believe, in episode number one, and you do not remember who you are. And so the universe is constantly sending you reminders. And those reminders are all around you. And the more conscious you become of the reminders, the more you cannot deny the truth of what is going on around us, that it is illusion. And the illusion is that it appears to be outside of us when it's truly going on inside of you. So if we know this to be a fact that everything that is outside of us is truly inside of us, then we already have the answers to all of our problems. It is only when we begin to project that problems lie outside of us that we no longer have those answers. And the ancients teach us that to truly become harmonic, to bring our bodies, our minds, into harmony, we must first harmonize within the self. And this is exactly what we have to do. Because as each individual begins to do the inner work of bringing your inner world into balance and harmony, then that is projected into the world that we can see. So as long as we see things outside of us that we do not want to see happening on our planet, in our neighborhood, in our families, the macrocosm and the microcosm are truly one, then we know we have more work to do within the self. And most people get quite confused about this because They'll look at their lives and say, well, I'm in good shape. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm not projecting this stuff. That's called the shadow. That's the shadow part of you that you cannot see, that you are not conscious of, that you are not aware of. That's the part that needs to be healed, the unconscious part of you. Because 
what you see is manifesting what you can't see. It's a manifestation of the energy that you're unaware of. And simply because you can see it is the proof and the evidence that more work needs to be done on the inner self inside of you. And so each one of us, yes, we have become projections and individual experiences, if you will, of the universe, of source energy, of the creator energy, however you want to term it. And we've taken on these individual personalities in order to have these beautiful experiences, in order for us to learn more quickly. Just think how quickly we are truly learning as a collective, as opposed to one doing this over and over and over again, one person, one soul doing this. We get to do it as a collective. Not only do we get to do it as a collective, we actually get to share in each other's experiences. And that's where the dream state comes in. It's very powerful. When you start to learn to dream consciously, there is something else we'll be getting into. And that's further down the line, but that is some deep stuff. And that's through the ancient Toltecs that we get the secrets of the dream state. And we begin to learn how to master our dreams. And that's where you truly begin to see things that you cannot deny. (laughs) Because you set it forth as an intention before you go to sleep. You have the dream. And then when you're in your waking state, you begin to see it manifest. So there is no denying that this stuff is real. And so as we continue to navigate our awakening, we will dive deeper into the unconscious, into the shadow, into the universal you. So know that you are the body universe and everything that happens inside of you is happening outside of you. So we do have a responsibility. And this is what the natives have said to us is that we have forgotten this connection. And through forgetting our connection, that we are truly one with the universe. We have become bad in handling what needs to be done on the planet. We are no longer good stewards of the planet, of nature, because we've forgotten that this is all part of us and there is no disconnect, truly. So as we continue to study with our ancient native teachings from around the world, then we will constantly be reminded of our work that we need to do within ourselves because truly we are the body universe and we do have the answers to all our problems. Everything we are challenged with, we already have the answers. There's nothing holding us back. So in order for you to change the outer world, you must change the inner world first. And frequency is the key to your experience. When you can shift yourself through frequency, and this is some of the ways of some call hijacking the system because you learn how to use frequency to your benefit. And this helps you to clear the body of lower frequencies and to raise your vibration more quickly because it is a slow process. We move through these levels very slowly. It's like the old radios that used to be in the cars and you would turn the dial and turn and turn and turn it to take you all day to get to the station you want to get to if it's really far away from where you started. So it's kind of the same way within our body that, and when I say body, our bodies that which we are, all parts of us. We move very slowly through these frequencies, but we can do things to help ourselves. And so this is a time that we live in that we can really work on it and we can use tools to help us move more quickly. So I'm going to give you a couple frequencies to work with today. So last week we talked about the frequencies of healthy human tissue, and I still want you to work on those. I'm going to give you a few more. So today I'm going to give you the frequency of the sun. 
Now you will hear different frequencies of the sun because there's different octaves. All of these numbers can go to different octaves. And we'll get into that exactly as the math that it is as we move into our numerology. But just know that these frequencies are real. And when you access them, when you use them, you are tuning into that physical object that has manifested through this frequency. And so we want to tune into the sun and the sun's octave 126.22 hertz is the number I want you to focus on in your meditation, 126.22. And this is going to help your heart come back into rhythm. This is going to bring your life back into harmony with the energy of the sun. And remember, we cannot exist without the sun on the outside of us or inside of us. And that's why we start with the internal light meditation. We're activating that inner sun that dwells within us. The next frequency I want you to focus on is the frequency of mercury. It's 141.27 hertz. Now, this is for those of you who have any issues with your throat, the thyroid, issues speaking your truth with love. Use mercury and the sun hurts of 141.27 for mercury and 126.22 for the sun. That's going to help you speak your truth with love. Now for the Venus energy, it's 221.23 hertz. This is to increase love in your life, the energy of love and female empowerment. If you are a woman and you feel like an underdog in this world is time for a little bit of female empowerment. Focus on 221.23 hertz to increase love and your empowerment. And the next is earth. Earth is 194.18 hertz. This is to increase your deep connection with mother earth. Again, 194.18 hertz. And the last one is Mars. We must connect with Mars once again. We're going to talk a lot about this. 210.42 hertz. 210.42 hertz. For your power, your strength, and your passion in life to be increased. Also to connect with your male energy. These are incredible frequencies for you to start working with. All you need to do is keep that idea of the number in your mind. Go into a quick meditation, and focus with the intention of healing yourself in these areas. Now, after our station break, we will begin our discussion on the Flickr people. It's an amazing time to be on the planet. We'll be right back in just a moment. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Awaken the Healing, Reclaim Your Life is a podcast that will change your life. If you are interested in expanding your consciousness and being self-empowered, then please tune in to our show. You can find us at awakenthehealing.com or on your favorite podcast app or platform. It's time for you to reclaim your life. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk Walk a mile mile in my my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Navigating the Awakening. Now, let's begin to look at the people who were born between June 21st and July 22nd. These people belong to the Frog Elemental Clan, and by entering the Sacred Hoop of Life at this time, this initiated them into the water element, and they are called Flicker People. This is Native Earth Astrology. These people were born under what is known as the Strong Sun Moon. Carnelian agate is their mineral totem. Wild rose is their plant totem. And the flicker is their animal totem. So let's now dive deeper into the flicker people to discover the powers and the magic they hold within them. Let's begin with their plant totem, the wild rose. This is a beautiful bush that has inspired many songs and wonderful poems to be written. The flowers of this bush have five petals arranged around a large yellow center. The colors can range from pale to bright pink. After the flowers disappear, the roses begin to form their fruit called hips, which are orange in color and look like berries. Many hips have a fleshy outer rind and small white seeds inside, but others are seedless. Some herbalists say the rind is bland, while others say it has a subtle, spicy flavor. No matter what the taste, rose hips are one of the richest sources of vitamin C. After the rose blooms from May to July, the hips begin to form and are ready to harvest in the fall. You can eat the hips raw throughout the fall and winter, just as the native people did in areas where the roses grew wild. You can dry the rose hips and ground them to make them into a flower, or use them in jam or in soups. The most common use today is to make them into a tea. If you boil them, you will extract about 40% of the vitamin C from them, but drying and making them into a flower will yield you about 65% of the vitamin C. Rose hips are excellent for colds and flu because of their large supply of that vitamin. Drink the tea for a sore throat and to assist you in getting over any cold symptoms. You can also steep rose petals in boiling water and make a delicious tea that will be a bit astringent for the body and will help to tone your body overall. The twigs and the roots can also be peeled and boiled to make tea. The native people use rosehip tea for colds and flu, as well as for many different ailments of the body. They also used it to dissolve kidney stones and gallstones, to cleanse the blood and to assist the liver. They use the distilled water of the flowers and leaves to strengthen the heart, to refresh the spirits, and to help with issues of the body that required a gentle cooling effect. You can also combine the hips with mint tea and raspberry leaves for children and anyone else to help them stay healthy and happy. Rose water is very healing as well. It was used in older times as an eye lotion to give relief from the discomforts of hay fever. And this helps because it has a very cooling effect. Rose petals are also made into an oil. You can use this for a perfume. You can use it as a hair rinse. This is one of the main ingredients in what is called potpourri, which is a combination of dried aromatic flowers that are used in sachets to scent clothing or your entire home. 
From their plant, Flickr people can learn of the wide variety of abilities that are available to them when they are flowering properly. Like the rose, they can be truly beautiful people capable of inspiring others with both their beauty and their usefulness. Flicker people, like their plant, have a wild quality about them and an attractiveness when they are in their flow. These people can be rebels that want to live their own way. They like to think for themselves or not, and they are not interested in the status quo. They want to live life by their own rules. Flicker people love beauty and they work to create a beautiful environment around them. They will also work on their inner self to create a peaceful environment within them. When their lives are in flow, they bring happiness to all those who are within their reach. They are family people who will not only love their own family, but will open their home and hearts to others and treat them as if they were family too. Flicker people have the tendency to embrace the stage of life that they are in when they are in balance. When the flowers of one stage of life withers, the hips of wisdom simply replace them. These people can be full of love. Again, when they are in balance, they are true healers, just as the wild rose is. They can create works of art that are beautiful, whatever their trade or profession. When in flow, they are good at many things and are quite balanced in their emotions. But when flicker people are out of the flow of life, then they can become quite depressed or angry people. This is a sign that they have stopped looking for the beauty in life and they need to be inspired once again. Flicker people can't bring beauty to the world if they have not developed it within themselves. The mineral totem of flicker people is the carnelian agate. This mineral is like the moss agate. It is a chalcedony, a cryptocrystalline quartz. It is a clear chalcedony, which can be found in pinks, reds, oranges, and yellows. It simply does not have the bands of color within the stone like the moss agate. In proper usage, the term carnelian is only applied to the translucent stone. The opaque forms of these stones are called jasper. Carnelian has been used for many, many years, thousands of years in ancient times for creating jewelry and other works of art. Because of its color, the carnelian has been associated with blood. It was considered to be an emergency stone, just as we have first aid kits the ancients used stones in the same way. Carnelian was used to heal people who had been accidentally injured and was said to have the power to stop bleeding. The stone was suspended from a string and used as a pendulum over the wound. The circular movement was believed to stop the bleeding and to start the healing process. And of course, this had to be the intention of the one using the stone. Because of its color and properties, carnelian is also considered a gift of the heart. This stone was given to represent love and was believed to assist the heart to keep it healthy. It also was used to assist the heart to keep it open to allow emotions to flow. Like their stone, flicker people have beauty within them and they love to create ornaments they love having a comfortable and beautiful home. They are truly home-oriented people, and they function best when their homes are in proper order. These people can be easily engraved with new thoughts, just as their stone is. But flicker people will analyze the new ideas thoroughly before allowing them to be fully integrated into their lives. And once these ideas and beliefs have been fully integrated, they are set in stone. Flicker people like carnelian are associated with the blood, both literally and figuratively. People of this totem have a special connection with the spleen, which holds a reservoir of blood for the body.
They have the ability to flow freely with life, much as the blood flows freely through a healthy body when they are in balance. Keeping their blood clean and healthy should be a priority of every flicker person and everyone else as well. And the rose and carnelian can help us all do this. Remember, when you are working with the blood, you do not want to drink teas that are strong blood purifiers every day. Teas like the yarrow. But a rose tea or the rose hips and petals can be drank every day. It is an aromatic tea, but it is still very powerful. It acts as a powerful toner for all the systems of the body. And this is why it can be drank every day. Rose oil and things of that nature made of, of the rose are all very powerful healers. And this is why they are so expensive. There is a true healing found within the rose. The mineral carnelian will also assist you in keeping your blood strong and healthy, flicker people. Just by carrying this stone in your pocket, you will assist yourself in strengthening your blood and your heart. Now, to keep you in balance, flicker people, you really need these things with you. You need to have these things in your life. So when you see that you are starting to go out of balance, it will usually manifest in your blood and your heart, as well as your stomach. Now, these are places that you can find very quickly that the issues are starting to form. And this is because you are out of balance and your energies have not been harmonic. So therefore, it is important for you to keep your emotions in balance and to keep your heart open or you can manifest imbalances within these areas. The blood is made in the bones. So imbalances can also manifest within your bones if you stay out of your flow state for too long. So these are tools to help you along your way in your awakening to assist you to stay strong and healthy along with anything else that you're using or the advice of your doctors and so on, people that you trust. All right, so carnelian is also known to be a stone of protection. And you flicker people are said to be protectors. Just like your stone, you are useful in times of emergency. You have deep intuitive powers that allow you to know what to do and you keep a cool nature about you that allows others to stay calm. This again is if you are in balance. You have a true love for people and this is felt by those you care for. You are natural protectors of your family and those you care for. Flicker people are sensitive to their own hearts and must learn to listen to their deep intuition. Because sometimes you can become too heady and you stop listening to your intuition. And that's when you will start to get into trouble because all of the guidance that you need is within you. And this is very important for you to be aware of and conscious of to really start listening to your inner guidance. Now, my father is a flicker person. And one thing that he always says is that if he has any issues he will go to bed with the intention of getting an answer to the problem. And he always wakes up with the answer. So this is something for you to start doing. If you haven't already been doing that, which your intuition may have already got it you to do that. But if not so, then I'm encouraging you to start doing that because you're very powerful. And you have to find the ways that you tap into your intuition. Everybody is different. So it can be something different for you, but start working with it because your intuition will guide you through your life. And when you love someone, you truly love them and they can count on you. You have a stable and solid love that others can rely on, especially your children. But again, you are the type that will raise other people's children just as your own. You have a big heart, you have enough love for everyone, and when you are in balance, you feel that way. You feel like you love the entire world. 
So for others who are dealing with flicker people, the thing that can get you cut off for life is treachery. If you lie or steal from them, as well as do something mean or spiteful for no reason, they do not recover easily from these things. They truly will never trust you again, even if they start talking to you. Flicker people make great sacrifices for their children, but even their children need to be aware of lying and treachery because even they can get cut off. And that is for life. When you betray a flicker person, it runs deep in their souls because they love that deeply. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of, flicker people, is to work on keeping your emotions even. Try not to get super excited that's in a positive way or a negative way. And you definitely don't want to go into depressions because all of these affect your heart. And your heart is so big because you truly connect with your heart. This is the energy of you. You move through your heart. And so it will be the physical thing, the physical part of you that will be affected when you start moving into an imbalanced state. So for those born under the strong sun moon, the flicker, this is your animal totem. This is a mystical member of the woodpecker family. There are two kinds of flickers in the United States. The yellow shafted flicker, usually found east of the Great Plains, and the red shafted flicker, usually found west of the Great Plains. Both types of flickers are found in a variety of places, in the forests, on farms, and even in the cities, as long as there are plenty of trees around. Both are grayish brown with a white rump, red crescent on their nape, which is the back of the neck, black crescent on the breast, and black spots below them. Unlike other woodpeckers, they spend a lot of time on the ground and will perch upright on limbs, just as the songbirds do. They are drummers, playing their songs on dead trees or limbs, tin roofs, or wooden houses. When desiring to mate, they put on an especially magnificent display of their musical talents. Flickers eat insects, wild seeds, and berries, and their diet sometimes includes grains and corn. They have an extensive arrangement of songs that includes one that sounds like wake up, wake up, and cheer up, cheer up. The flicker's flight is strong and direct, With its strong bill and tongue, it looks for insects in holes of trees. It also uses its sharp bill to dig gourd-shaped holes in tree trunks to make its nest. These nests are usually 8 to 25 feet off of the ground, and the openings are 2 inches in diameter. Flickers can have from 6 to 20 eggs, with around 8 being the norm. Flickers are good and caring parents, taking good care of their young until it is time for them to fly on their own. The flicker is a special bird to many native people. It is considered to be a courageous bird. A native legend says that the flicker has red wings because it went too close to a fire that was set by the earthquake spirit. It was trying to put it out, and the flames from the fire colored the tail and wings red. This sounds very much like the native legend of the raven and how it was once all white, then turned black by putting out the fires that tried to destroy humanity. Now, flickers are especially valued because of their drumming. The natives acknowledge their drum beat to be as valuable as the heartbeat. Theirs represented the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Because of their song, they are considered special birds, and their feathers are used in many native ceremonies, as well as added to ceremonial dress. Because their feathers are red, it is seen as blood, and this feather is the feather of choice to be presented to the war spirits. Red feathers on prayer sticks are considered war offerings against either humans or spiritual enemies. But if flicker feathers are worn in the hair, this designates the person to be of the medicine clan. 
From your animal totem, Flicker people, you can learn of your latent powers and abilities. You are reminded of your medicine and the powers you hold in your blood. This is echoed from the stone carnelian as well. You may have musical talents that lie dormant within you. You also have mystical powers that lie dormant. And the only way in which they will come out is if you live a life that is balanced and work to have a harmonious environment around you. This is what will bring forth your latent talents and abilities. You have the ability to pierce through the veil of illusion to see the true reality. You simply can feel it. Flicker people, you are so intuitive that you don't even realize that you are tapping into something deep within you. This is called the power of the heart. And again, you are extremely connected to your heart when you are in balance. And so you have to remember that because it's a very powerful part of you. You can tap into the knowledge of your heart and this gives you courage. Your heart is the key to your powers. And this is why it is important for you to keep your heart healthy and strong. Negative emotions weaken your heart. So you are encouraged to release the negative energies that can be held within your body. And drumming would be a very good therapy for you. So it might be something you want to look into. They have all kinds of drums and some of them you may find to be super fun. So this will help you because it's in your energy. You may find that drumming will assist you on many levels to help you attune to your inner magic and dormant powers. You are encouraged to take care of your blood just as your animal totem is known for its red feathers. This represents the blood that flows through you. Remember the native legend and how the feathers were turned red. It was through a fire that the earthquake spirits brought on. This is a message to you, Flicker people, to not allow your negative emotions to cause you to lose your peace and to be consumed by your inner fire, your inner anger. Remember to take care of your heart, and that is literal as well as figurative. Anything and anyone that is important to you is considered your heart. Follow your dreams and create a peaceful and loving environment around you. And this way, Flicker people, you will become the best you that you can be. Now, one of the songs of the Flicker is Wake Up, Wake Up. Think about that. It literally sounds like that's what they're saying. Wake up, wake up. And the other one is cheer up, cheer up. So just think about that. It's extremely powerful. And you can see why the natives found this bird so fascinating. Because we are living in the time of the awakening. So who is better to bring the message of the awakening than the Flicker people? Because you connect through your heart. This takes you directly to your soul energy. When you are in balance, when you are in your flow, you are on point with your intuition. You're absolutely on point with your intuition. But remember, the heart needs to stay clear of negative emotion because it acts like a crystal. It can absorb negative energy. And because you have such a big heart, you will find yourself wanting to help other people who are always in distress. And that's why they say that you're like an emergency stone. You're, you're, you're agate, the carnelian. You act as that agate. In times of people's trouble, they come to you because they feel very soothed by your energy. And you have so much love that it's felt. You truly are concerned about them. So they will come to you. And that, again, is to be watched for because you can absorb other people's energy because your heart is so big and you want to help them so much. But your job is not to take on their issues, their problems, their negative energy. Your job is to help them dissolve it. Your job is to help them rise above it. And you know how to do this very well. And you know the exact right things to tell them when you are in your flow. So that's why it's so important for you to stay in your flow, stay in your lightheartedness. When you begin to 
take on people's problems or watch too much news or whatever it is, then you can become depressed. So this is something you need to also watch for. You do not want to be consumed by negativity on any level. Keep your heart strong, healthy, because you are here to help humanity remember how to see past their emotions and how to use their inner sight to guide them through the storms. Flicker people, I want to also say to you, you are needed in the time of the awakening. So don't forget your song is wake up, wake up, cheer up, cheer up. Keep that in your mind. Flicker people also remind us to smell the roses. So don't go through life focusing on all of the bitter things. Take on a little bit of the sweetness. Learn how to drink some rose hip tea to soothe your mind, body, heart, and soul. Put a few petals in there to increase the flavor and the aroma of life because that's what we're here for. We're here to enjoy this place we call Earth. It's a beautiful time to be on the planet. So I want to say thank you for joining me for another incredible show. Tune in next week to find out about the Sturgeon people born between July 23rd and August 22nd. They belong to the Thunderbird Fire Clan. I leave you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. Have a beautiful week.